Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof continues to be in the actual singing. We got a lot of requests for this, and that is, how can I find my own voice, or how do I get my own unique voice? Um, and what is the difference between imitating or emulating an artist and then, you know, me trying to find my own sound, okay? Those are all really good questions. But let me ask you a question because I think this is really important. I've seen a lot of people write this comment that is, you know, you should never sound like anyone else. You should only sound like yourself, okay? Well, there's truth to that and not truth to that. And let me explain what I mean. If we didn't have influences, and if we weren't inspired by other people, we wouldn't really have the toolbox to draw from to get to our, our own unique sound, things that we like. Any guitar player, any piano player, any, you know, any instrumentalist especially will tell you, well, you know, I, I, I love this player and I love that player and this and that. And me as a guitar player, I remember growing up, I wanted to be Jimmy Page really bad. And by the way, this evolved into different things. So let me explain some, Side notes to this, okay? So guitar was my first instrument. So I was, I'm every bit as accomplished on guitar as I am singing. People don't know that, they just think, oh, you're just a singer guy. No, I actually, I'm a pretty gnarly guitar player. Maybe not as good as Satriani or, you know, Paul Gilbert or Steve Vai or Lukather, or some of my favorite, you know, guys, but I'm 80% of that, or at least got to that point in my life. That's how hard I worked at it. Eight hours a day playing for 20 some odd years. After a while, you get pretty good at something. So anyway, but um, getting back to this, so my influences early on, like I said, I want to be Jimmy Page really bad. Now you're gonna laugh at this, but it's a funny story and it's worth noting. I wanted to be Jimmy Page so bad that when I was really young, and I wanna say I was nine or 10, maybe 11, we lived in an area called Buena Park. Now Buena Park now, it's in, it's in California, it's become a really bad area, but we actually happen to live in a nice area where it was called Bellhurst where they had a nice golf course and they did the US Open sometimes and you know, whatever. And my parents would take me down to the La Mirada Mall on Saturdays. And at the time, uh, the movie Song Remains the Same, it was a Zeppelin movie, their big movie, uh, was playing as a matinee. In fact, it was playing a lot. Back, back in the day, movies didn't come in and out like they did now, do now. Uh, they stayed for really long periods of time. A lot like, you know, Pink Floyd, The Wall, for example, I think was on the top, Billboard's top 100 for 20 years or something. And you rarely do ever see any music do that anymore. So, but at this time, that's, that was the 70s and, you know, whatever. So what they would do is they would drop me off at the early matinee of Song Remains the Same. And very few people were there, it was early. Uh, you know, I think the first showing was like 10.30 in the morning or something. And uh, the box office would make me check my guitar. I'd bring my guitar with me. And they'd make me check my guitar at the box office. And um, I would have to go into the movie and I, and I wanted to see how Jimmy Page played this. Now, today we get the benefit right now, like you're getting the benefit of YouTube and I could play something and show it to you exactly whatever. We didn't get all those perks. We didn't get any of that. In fact, not only did we not do that, when I was trying to learn Race with the Devil on Spanish Highway by Aldi Miola and some other songs, I had to take my brother's uh, turntable and put my finger on it and slow it down so I could hear the notes slower and they're in a different key because it, you know, the Doppler effect is it slows down. You put it in, right? And you slow it down and you stop it for a minute. You like try to learn those few notes, right? So we didn't get the benefit of YouTube. So here I am back at the movie theater and this is gonna bring this on home here in a minute on, you know, how to find your own unique voice, and unique sound. So I'd go there, check my guitar into the box office, go into the movie theater, watch one part of the movie. Now, remember that I, the movie doesn't just stop and I get to go back and watch the rest of it. So I'd run back out there, I'd get my guitar, and they were so sweetly accommodating, you know, they would let me have my guitar, and I'd play it and I'd learn that one little part, right? And then I'd put it back out and, oh, God, God, and I missed the next section of Song Remains the Same, and now I gotta wait until the next section. And so I did this for six months, I am not kidding. Six months it took me to learn the live version of you know, Stairway to Heaven, you know, uh, just whatever, all these Zeppelin songs. Um, and it was pretty arduous, it was pretty tough. But it gave me character and it made me hungry and I learned a lot. And now I say Jimmy Page because he has a really fast vibrato, you know. You know, like really fast, kind of like ACDC, you know. And um, so I thought that was cool. 
And that was, you know, I, in, I internalized that and I represented that in my own, and I sounded like a Jimmy Page clone, okay? Now you're gonna say, well, how do you, what's the difference between your own personal, uh, finding your own unique voice or your own unique guitar playing and, and, and mimicking or emulating someone else? So then I liked Carlos Santana and I started learning some Carlos Santana. And I liked Al Di Miola and John McLaughlin, you know, like a progressive players back then. And I also liked, you know, Aerosmith and I liked you know, a lot of the great bands, you know, Leonard Skinner and, and whatnot. And the more I filled up my toolbox with great quality uh, licks and things from other people, I started to see what I really liked about them and maybe some things I wanted to change. And let me give you a quick example of what I mean by that. When I first heard Steve Lukather, and I remember it was Toe to Hold the Line, you know, it has this really wide vibrato. It was exactly the opposite of Jimmy Page. The opposite. But it was pretty cool. And I'm like, gosh. And, and then the notes he was playing were kind of jazzy, and I'm like, that's pretty cool. And so I started, again, re presenting this, you know, internalizing it and putting it in my toolbox and coming up with my own stuff. Now, let's talk about singers. So, as you guys might know already, my cousin is Sammy Hagar, right? From the band Van Halen and all of his own stuff. Um, and I'm not saying that gratuitously. I've just, like, I could have, like, I want to be Sammy. I actually didn't. I love Sam's voice and it's great. And he's, you know, I'm definitely inspired by him. But I was more inspired by Lou Graham and Paul Rogers and David Coverdale and Mickey Thomas and, you know, all these, um, I won't say Steve Perry as much, but uh, Steve Walsh, you know, from Kansas and, and you know, different guys and uh, Mark Farner and, you know, Grant Funk and just, you know, whatever. So I would listen to those guys and I noticed something because I started getting into Motown. And that was anathema, which means accursed to the rock world. It's like, you can't do Motown and you can't do disco. But I actually like them both. It's kind of creepy. You know, I thought like Cool in the Gang, Celebration, celebrate good times, come on. Like, you know, and, and ironically, I, got a, I know I'm in a rabbit trail here for a second, but how funny that Eddie Van Halen on Best of Both Worlds on his guitar, da 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 Da, 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 da. He does the same lick on guitar as Celebration by Cool in the Gang, right? But we're, we're too cool. We're rock guys. We're not supposed to be into disco. So, but didn't seem to bother Eddie too much. And they also did some other covers of other things like that. Getting back to your own unique voice. So anyway, so um, the more I learned about different styles, and then I got into flamenco, and I got into, you know, a nouveau jazz flamenco, and just all kinds of other stuff. You can't go wrong learning other people's styles and then incorporating incorporating that into your own style. So the more we do this, we, again, we build this toolbox and we have this giant palette by which we get to paint. So I sort of think of this like painting a picture. And someone taught me about colors or I got to see this artist paint this thing. And I thought, well, that's cool. I learned something from that guy. This other guy painted something completely different. I learned something from that guy. So I have all these colors on this palette and I get to go, today I want to paint something that sounds like flamenco. Today, I want to paint something hard rock. Today, I want to do this. Now, am I emulating other artists? Well, go, I know I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. It's worth noting. Go to, um, in uh, what's it called, uh, the stars where they have the hard rock thing. Hard rock, uh, you know, when you get your star, hard rock. Um, uh, Walk of Fame, Hall of Fame, Hard Rock Hall of Fame. Um, go there and they have these kiosks and you can push these kiosks and you see Aretha was inspired by Mahalia Jackson, which was inspired by so-and-so. Billie Holiday was inspired by da -da -da. you know, Steven Tyler, and da -da -da. you know, all these guys. And you push these kiosks and you see this tree of all of their inspiration. Well, doesn't that kind of say it all? We all have inspiration. And if we don't embrace that inspiration and then represent our art from what we've learned, if we don't have this inspiration, we're very shallow and very narrow and very myopic in what it is that we have to represent. But if we have a big palette for that, then the sky's the limit. And that's actually one of the coolest things about KTVA. Again, I cover all this in my course. I keep you know, talking about the course, but I really do. I cover this and I say, hey, look, let's get, in fact, if you notice, most of my artists, I push them out of their element. You know, Gabriella was just a rock chick. She was David Coverdale in a hot chick's body, pretty much. You know, funny. But in the end, what happened was, you know, we did all kinds of R&B. We did some soul. We did some, you know, pop stuff, whatever. In fact, one of the things she, uh, she made a comment where I think we were doing, 
I think it was Leona Lewis, the, uh, there was a soundtrack for um, the movie that she did the soundtrack for, I think in a minute. Anyway, and instead of her going, let's rock, she comes out, she surprised me in her little check accent, she goes, let's pop. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty funny, caught me off guard. But, but I pushed her out of her element and she's so thankful for it that all of a sudden she's got this huge palette for singing. So guys, again, it's not one or the other, it's that we learn from other people. It, it's artisanry, it, we're artisans and we're learning from another artisan and we're taking that and go, oh, they built that fireplace this way and that was pretty cool but I think I'll make mine like this, right? Thank you for joining me, Ken Templin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Until next time, peace out. Hey guys, if you like what you heard, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get notified when I have a new cool video come out, you need to go to my channel and click on this little bell icon and it will actually notify you every time I have a video come out. Thanks guys.